Theatre on the last day of November, uh, Friday the 30th of November, of November. Thank you very much for joining us right here on CTV. It's first up right now, we focus on the uh, mental uh, state, possibly, of uh, Dr. Wayne Kublar Singh. He's into day 15 of his uh, hunger strikes slash fast. Uh, Daryl, good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hi, good morning, Paul. Good morning, Chiran Nabigo. Certainly, as a, a psychologist, mm -hmm. uh, you must be looking on with great interest at this yes. particular phenomenon, if I can call it that. Yes, yes. And uh, we, we've seen Dr. Kublar Singh, one of his sisters, come out and beg him to seek medical attention. Mm -hmm. uh, while anyone who has who would have undertaken this, this uh, fast for the cause, if, if you agree with him, would be getting commendation. There's a side mm -hmm. of it that says, well, it's it's a kind of tacit blackmail. Uh, but even as one uh, refuses food, mm -hmm. and I guess there's a certain level of water during the course of the day, and it's yes. an intravenous fluid drips, there must be some sort of mental impact on this on this individual as the days progress. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, you know, I agree. I am really looking on with great interest, and. There's two different things going on in my mind at the same time, mm -hmm. all right? In one regard, and I don't want to be misquoted on this, so let me try and be, as, be clear very clear as possible, <laughs> all right? Okay. I can't recall the last time a citizen, an ordinary citizen, stood up on a principle of their own personal belief and was willing to put their life on the line for it. We've seen that in other countries, and, and to some extent, you know, we've admired it, and we've sort of cheered on and said, you know, those people are really serious about what they believe in. I can't recall the last time I've seen somebody do that locally. So there's one side of me that is thinking, wow, this is really a different example, and is this going to replicate itself going forward? Are we as Trinities becoming more conscious and more aware? But there's another side of me, which I suppose is the side that, um, the, the, the therapeutic side, which is looking on at someone who is obviously in danger, and wondering how far this is going to go. Um, the people who are around him, who care about him, who are concerned about him, uh, how far they're going to let things go and what can be done in the interim. Let's talk about how much cognitive impairment takes mm -hmm. place as one denies oneself sustenance yes, yeah. uh, for a sustained period. This is two weeks in a day now. Yes, okay. Well, um, in terms of... All right, let me just deal straight with that. Mind, body very intimately connected, okay? Emotions also, intimately connected. To deny one will definitely negatively impact the others. So if a person, for example, okay, when I'm dealing, for example, with um, persons who are going through trauma, like you've lost someone, someone died, or you know, some, some serious trauma, one of the things that we, um, that we try to enforce that the person does is that they eat properly, that you know, they get their meals on time, proper nutrition. We're not talking about buying KFC two o'clock in the morning, sorry. Yeah, All right. Putting KFC or the KFC, not gonna sponsor anymore. Go ahead. <laughs> Say fast food. <laughs> <laughs> fast food. <laughs> okay. We're not talking about that. Um, sleeping properly, getting a certain number of hours sleep. Because we recognize and it's scientifically proven that your body needs to be in good working order if your emotional self and if you, as you said, your cognitive um, uh, abilities. abilities, all right, are going to remain intact. So from the time you start denying your body nutrition, there is going to be an impact upon your mind. Because remember your brain, people try to separate brain from body. Your brain is an organ. Well, your brain generates your mind. That's right. And your, and your mind generates your thoughts. That's right. So That's if your right. brain doesn't have energy or, or fuel to run itself it's like any other organ, down. it's going to start it's to break down. To start How to much break breaking down. down is taking place after two weeks? Uh, can one make r rational decisions mm -hmm. After two weeks of starving oneself or denying oneself at a particular level, anyway, if you if if you believe that side of the story. Yeah. Okay. Well, in clinical practice, when we have to do an evaluation on someone, there's a set of steps that mm -hmm. we go through in order to determine whether somebody is mentally fit or not. Okay. So without the 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 um opportunity to do something like that. You have to judge and base on what you see, on what you observe, all right? Now, one of the there are very positive signs is that Dr. Kublai Singh is still very lucid. His thoughts, his ideas, the things that he's saying, his words, um, they all seem to make sense, and he's still able to converse with people and so on. So that's a positive sign. Would you expect, because I know the different bodies react differently to different that's right. environmental stimuli mm -hmm. or denying oneself food, mm -hmm. but is, is it within what baseline operations would suggest for someone who's truly denying himself food mm -hmm. and I guess a certain level of water intake because I know one can't survive without water for three days. It's, the, it's physically impossible to survive without water for correct. more than three days. So let's correct. just get that yeah. as far That's as correct. I know. I yep. can be corrected by a doctor if I'm wrong. Yeah, uh, you know, but you have the right three, idea. Three to five days, yes. you know, but food is something different. Mm -hmm. Can one 
sustain rational thought, brain operation, neurological activity mm -hmm. with, with that level of, of denial? Right. It's, that's a very um, individualized situation, and some people may not be able to, other, other people will. So that's why I said, all we can really rely on is what we observe, mm -hmm. all right? Now, the minute, heaven forbid, Dr. Kublal Singh starts to say things that, you know, are obviously way out there and don't make any sense and not relating to people who are actually in front of him, you know, okay. Well, well let's, let's, let's postulate that a bit and, yes. and just presume this, this is day mm -hmm. 25 or day 30. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, like a month now. Yes. If that is the case, what can we expect to start to see? Uh, cognitively, in terms of deterioration, delirium, yes. uh, a lack of rational thought, yes. displacement yes. sometimes. Yes. All of those things. Maybe speaking to people who are not there. Maybe um, there's a, an expression that I uh, find it very amusing, but it's a serious expression. Word salad. Mm -hmm. Where you're talking under the tree and this, and the sky and stuff. Non connected and 15, thought yes, processes. Yes, unconnected thoughts, all right? Random thoughts that mm -hmm. seem to don't string together, not making sense. Um, those are signs of a, a delirious state, all right? Obviously, if you've gotten to that state, things are really, really bad for you. And, and at that stage, would it be possible for a family member? I saw his wife paid a visit to him mm -hmm. uh, earlier on this week, and I guess siblings or, or parents, his mother also has been yes. involved. Can they make a decision to, to get an assessment from a professional uh, about his mental state and, and his capabilities uh, to make rational decisions on his own behalf? Right, now this is where it gets really interesting, Paul, because um, the Mental Health Act. Mental Health Act, okay? There are actually, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> there are two different ways that the, his current fast can be stopped. Or put it a different way, there are two mm. different avenues through which persons attached to him can seek to take action to get him to stop. All right? And I'll go into that Absolutely. now. That's okay. All right. So I am actually looking at the Mental Health Act of Trinidad and Tobago here. And you know, everything these days has a section. Okay? Oh, yeah. But there's no section 34 Thank in this God. one. All right? Amen. We have sections 10 and sections 15 of the Mental Health Act. And I'll talk about section 10, first of all, by family request. All right, so um, uh, the psychiatric hospital director or duly authorized medical officer may, on an application made by a relative or friend and accompanied by two certificates of two medical practitioners, one of whom shall be a government medical officer. So what that basically is saying is a relative who sees someone, a relative of theirs in danger, mm -hmm. in medical danger, they can make a request by a state approved accompanied by professional. two. Two state approved professionals. Has to be two. One has to be from a government medical officer, the other one doesn't have to be. But both of them have to be doctors, all right? Mm -hmm. They need two medical certificates. They can make an application to, in our case, it would be the Psychiatric Hospital of St. Anne's, mm -hmm. to initiate action, all right? And that action can go all the way as far as, um, quoting from the same angle a little lower down, um, even if the person does not wish to go willingly, such a person can be apprehended at any time and in any place by a police officer or any person designated in writing for that purpose by the psychiatric hospital director or the duly authorized medical officer and be brought to a hospital or a psychiatric what ward. What would be the classifications for that person's issue at that time? Okay, very good. But would that be a, considered a mental illness or a mental sub-functioning of some yep. type? Yeah, it would be. It definitely would be. And there's even some, the attempt to define exactly what that means, all right? So mentally ill, mentally ill or mentally ill person, for example, I'm still quoting, means a person who is suffering from such a disorder of the mind that he requires care, supervision, treatment, and control for his own protection or welfare. Okay? For his own protection or welfare. So once you can prove that his actions are not in his own best interest in terms of his own care and protection, you can make a claim that there's some mental disorder going on and an application can be made by a relative accompanied by two medical certificates for him to be apprehended. So let's just say, because there let's are family members who support his thrust at this moment, mm -hmm. his mother, his wife, uh, several siblings, mm -hmm. but he has a sister who has shown opposition to him and begged him to seek medical attention. Mm -hmm. uh, how is that reconciled with the fact that some members of the family may say, go ahead, we support you, and one may come out and say, well, I, I'm going to get uh, two medical officers, state approved, yes. and, and intervene for some sort of assessment to be done. How does yeah. that work? Well, this is where I think we need to get the, uh, the legal minds in. <laughs> so it goes, right. to, like everything else, it goes to court? It goes to court, right? It, it has to be a matter of interpretation. Because based on the letter that's written here, and I mean, we understand that words are written to attempt to address every situation, but as situations come up, the laws evolve, mm -hmm. okay? But as it's written here, it just plainly says relative. 
So any relative, according to this law here, right, can make an application once it's accompanied by the right paperwork. Another component has also been added here where we see Dr. Kobla Singh entering ambulances and, and seems to be getting intravenous intervention mm -hmm. at different points. Yes. And several medical professionals have indicated that they fear organ failure Yes. at some point. Yes. And I guess on a daily basis there's an ambulance in standby and assessments may be, I, I don't know why, we don't have the facts where this is concerned, mm -hmm. but I'm supposing the, the person who's administering the intravenous drips to Dr. Yeah. Kublal Singh will be making assessments about his state of health at Absolutely. that point. What 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 sort of responsibility responsibility is on that medical professional right. to make that sort of assessment? Because certainly there can be the, the the presumption at some point. Well, you're the doctor. You should have said he was in critical state at that point and say, well, this man needs some intervention and and let somebody come in and deal with it because he's he's at a point where his organs are going to fail. All right, Paul. And certainly that has put his life in in in, in critical in jeopardy. Critical danger. Paul, you're asking all the right questions this morning. Good. <laughs> I'm quoting now from the Code of Ethics from the Medical Board of TNT, all right? Because we're talking about medical personnel and their responsibility to a patient, all right? Duties of doctors to the sick. A doctor must always bear in mind the obligation, and I repeat, obligation of preserving human life. That's a very, very it's a simple statement. It's a very strong statement. So what it says is that well, if any a doctor, if once any again, doctor, repeat it for me, please. A doctor must always bear in mind the obligation of preserving human life. So if I'm a doctor, I'm dealing with a patient, and there's a danger to this patient's life, I have an obligation to act in that patient's best interest. Even if that patient is the one initiating the danger. Yes. Even if. So what does that mean for the situation then? That means that if that's, the, a, that, that's, a, that's a different component to this yeah. now, legally. That means that if the people who are involved in the situation are watching this program, they've just gotten a whole bunch of things to think about. <laughs> All right? I don't know if this kind of discussion is going on behind closed doors because medical personnel discuss cases. All right? He would have been to the hospital already and they would have assessed him. There are doctors who are looking at him every day. So I can only imagine in terms of interest and care of the patient that this kind of discussion is going. Should we let him go on? Should we pull it back? When should we go? When should we stay? From a psychological assessment perspective, yes. and, and I'm, I'm just wishing this because I know people are very emotional about this, uh -huh. should he reach the point where his organs start to fail and doctors or medical personnel have to revive him, mm -hmm. is that now some sort of prerequisite for the situation we spoke about before, where now this person has gone over the edge, yeah. his life would have been revived through critical intervention yes. because his organs have failed yes. and now it is incumbent upon the authorities, medical authorities at that, yes. both uh, physical and psychological to make an assessment as to whether this person should be allowed to, to continue or be declared mentally unfit to make those decisions on his or her own behalf. Okay, if it gets to the stage where organ failure occurs then there's, there's no if but or maybe. He requires immediate medical, urgent medical attention, alright? The danger is we don't know when that's gonna happen, alright? And it's possible that he there's, there's no set um, template for how this is supposed to go take place. So he can be very lucid, he can be very aware and so on, and the organs can be failing at the same time. We don't know, all right? So this is a, is a very sensitive period of time right now where the people who are close to him, his relatives, the doctors who are looking after him, and I really hope some of them are looking on, all right? They need to be thinking very carefully about this situation and about what is best for the good gentleman. When, when we spoke earlier on about the, the obligation of the medical professional who is obviously seen to him because I'm presuming he can't administer the IV by himself. No. So there's a medical professional has to be already there. who has some sort of responsibility yes. at this stage. Can that medical professional be ordered by the Minister of Health, mm -hmm. who is basically his boss, I guess, yes. in the public sector, mm. to get some sort, to, to, to do something? I am not sure about that. That's legal so I don't want to say it. That's legal. I'm not sure if the Minister of Health can do that. But I know certainly the doctor in their capacity as a, as a doctor can certainly decide to initiate action. In this situation now, when everything becomes very political, mm -hmm. should that situation where Dr. Kublal Singh may be uh, declared for his own good yes. at some point down the road, should his organs fail yes. and should a, a psychiatric assessment been done mm -hmm. to, to, to ascertain whether he can't rationally make decisions because mm -hmm. of the impairment cognitively through, yes. the, through the fast, yes. how, how can this classification at this stage affect him down the road? 
like he is declared medical, medically unfit now to yes. preserve his life. Yes. A year down the road, does that classification oh, no, have no, any, any no. permutations? No, 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 no. no. Um, a psychiatric or psychological assessment is always for the particular point in time upon which it's made. So and somebody can't belongs... say two years down the no, road that, well, no, no. Dr. Kulbal Singh was already no. declared unfit because no. X and Y. The man has been denying himself food and water for days now, so right? That's, that's, that's going to affect anybody. Case. I get mm -hmm. hungry for a few hours and I start irritating everybody around me, mm -hmm. all right? So, I mean, you know, that's, that's quite normal. On a wider national level, how do you think this is impacting the population, particularly young children looking on? Yeah. Because, as you said before, there are two sides, two perspectives to this. Mm -hmm. One, uh, any, any individual who, who has the conviction of ways to put himself or herself in danger for a cause mm -hmm. can be loaded. Mm -hmm. On the other side, some people see this tacit blackmail yes. where a country can become ungovernable yes. if at every stage of development Somebody does someone decides yeah. I'm going to have a hunger strike yes. because I don't like what the government is doing. Yes. So what sort of messages is sending to the wider population? Okay, you see, um, we're really dealing with a situation here that we're not prepared to deal with, huh? meaning that we're not accustomed dealing with this, all right? The normal, if you want to call it normal training response to something you don't like is to complain about it for a bit and then go back as normal as though nothing yeah, ever happened. But this is different now. So this is different. So we're not really prepared for it. And when people encounter something they're not familiar with, there are usually a couple of different reactions. They can become very scared of it and turn away from it. They can ridicule it in an attempt to try and make it not real or to make it disappear. And you're seeing those two general reactions in the population. So there's a whole bunch of people. And I mean, some of it would be politically motivated as a well. A lot of it All is right? politics now. Okay. So a lot of people who are trying to change or turn the situation into something strictly political. All right, and that's where you're hearing comments about it being, I don't want to repeat some of those comments, okay? But you're hearing all sorts of things trying to uh, basically turn what's going on into something political and say that it's not genuine and not true, all right? Then there's a whole bunch of other people. Well, there are people who are making jokes about it as well. Eh? Which is ridiculous. You know, Chinese, also, yeah, which Chinese, is ridiculous. Yeah, Chinese joke about just Whether you anything. agree or not, I don't think it's something to no, joke about. No, it's not something In funny. our final 90 seconds, Dara, let's, yes. let's make the distinction between this and suicide. Okay, very clear. A suicidal person wants to die. That's what they're trying to do. A hunger striker, their objective is not to die. Their objective is to be heard and to be, um, to be to, for action to be taken based upon their concerns. So a hunger striker is not a suicide. So this person. is not suicide, but no. can it, exp can it in impact potential suicide victims in any way? Um, you mean like those who are looking on? Yeah. No, suicide is a very personal situation. Mm -hmm. It's a very personal, it's a personal choice, crisis. All right? So people, you know, I, I mean, I'm, there's always a possibility, but in a general sense, I would say no. Daryl, thanks for being with us. Thanks very much. Very for interesting com too. comment about the doctor's responsibility there. All right, uh, that's Daryl Joseph, a psychologist, talking about the ramifications, the mental, psychological ramifications about Dr. Kublai Singh's ongoing fast. He's up to day 15 now, and we'll continue to monitor the situation coming.